And the scene of the latest school shooting. So much of what we're learning about this particular shooting unusual. The suspect identified as transgender, a biological woman. The school, a private Christian academy. The suspect taken out by police in just 14 minutes after the initial call to 911. Remarkable considering it took them 77 minutes to take out the shooter in Uvalde, Texas months ago. For more on this, let's welcome in former New York Congresswoman Nan Hayworth and former Trump campaign aide Rick Gates. Um, great to have you both back on. Uh, Rick, to you first, what was your reaction to this latest tragedy in Nashville, Tennessee? Uh, my, my heart just breaks for the families, for all the families involved and, and for the community. Nashville is, you know, very, a good city in the U.S. I mean, it, it is just tragic to see this uh, incident happen again. And as we look more, there's a report late, earlier this morning that the uh, sheriff's office said that part of the motive may have been resentment for Audrey Hale actually attending that school. I think as we learn more about the motivations, I think it can help us figure out how we can prevent this again from moving forward to any school uh, in the country. And I think that's what we ought to be focused on. Yeah, Nan, you're a mom. I'm a mom. I, I mean, when you hear these types of things, our kids are supposed to be safe. They're supposed to go to school and be safe. And I know every parent this morning is questioning if their school is safe. Uh, one of the big issues that we continue to hear when these school shootings happen is the mental health crisis that we're seeing in America. Um, and we continue to, when we find out about these shooters, um, a lot of them had mental health problems. Allison, exactly. Rob mentioned it earlier today. Uh, these uh, these kinds of events tend to be followed by others of similar nature. Uh, there is a, a social contagion. There is uh, a, a, an epidemic, if you will, of uh, mental illness and or dysfunction going on in our country. Jonathan Haidt just published a, a detailed essay with a lot of data. Since 2010, with uh, the ubiquity of so-called smartphones, uh, young Americans in particular, social media exposure, have suffered a decline in mental health, young females even more so than young males. Uh, I think we're seeing this played out in, in various ways. I think it does contribute to phenomena like this ever since Columbine, which of course predated 2010. Uh, so the answer to uh, the response to this has to be, uh, it is a long-term response, it is multifactorial, but the first thing to do, Allison, as you mentioned, is protect these vulnerable children, protect our schools. Yeah. Uh, and, and that can be done. School resource officers, there's no reason every school cannot have a school resource officer. Every school needs one. Every yeah. school in the country, it acts as a deterrent. Research has shown that. Um, according to the Cato Institute, I thought this was interesting, only six percent of school shootings happen at private schools. This was really unusual uh, and no resource officer present there. Uh, the school was a hardened target, although all schools are soft targets uh, to an extent. The doors were locked, but she blew through the glass front doors and then walked up to the second floor. Looked like it was targeted. Uh, the police chief down there in Nashville has indicated that this manifesto that she left uh, at her home will be released because there's no suspect in the case. She was uh, taken down at the school. Um, but it's interesting, Rick, we need to somehow change the way we report on these stories. We, it's a cycle. These tragedies happen, and then we in the media report on them, and then that increases the spectacle and also the likelihood of maybe a copycat. According to one report, a copycat shooting happens 13 days after the initial, an initial school shooting, which is not good. Yeah, look, the media kind of sensationalizes these events. And look, the media should report the facts. I think it's important that people know the information. But at the same time, uh, they, they go beyond that. They, they start digging into areas that necessarily are more opinionated than fact-based. And I think that gives, you know, viewers and, and, and readers, you know, part of the, the problem that they, you know, then extend to how people interpret this. And ultimately, what happens with these kind of copycats is people become desensitized to these types of things. So I think we to go back and really focus on, yes, how the media reports it, what, in, in fact, they do report, not a lot of speculative stuff, but let's just report on the, the key facts, not make this, you know, completely overblown into some political issue, which obviously the White House is trying to do at the moment, but really focus on what matters to these kids and making sure that this yeah. doesn't happen again. You're taking a live look at the entrance to that school there in Nashville, Tennessee, and there's a shot of downtown Nashville, beautiful city uh, in Tennessee. Uh, Nan, 
This is Joe Biden yesterday. And look, working in, in the news business, for example, sometimes we'll have a, a lighter segment, you know, maybe a cooking segment, and then we'll learn in our ear about some breaking news and we'll have to get real serious real fast. I would say that's a job requirement for President of the United States. Joe Biden failed this test miserably yesterday. He walked into uh, the East Room of the White House, and this is what he had to say about ice cream, knowing full well that he was going to be talking about this tragedy down in Nashville, Tennessee. Take a look. And I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. You think I'm kidding? I'm not. Literally, Nan, a breath later, he was talking about gun control uh, after mentioning what happened in Nashville, Tennessee. Just your reaction as a politician, Nan, you served in Congress less than 30 seconds, but your reaction to how the president handled this yesterday. This man is an affront to the dignity of our country and to the sensibilities of every American. He has no compassion. Uh, I have argued repeatedly that he never has shown compassion for anyone, really. Uh, he's, a, he's just a narcissist, uh, and he's incompetent, and he's senile, and he should go. Yeah, and he, just the press was briefed that he was going to address this when he be, was beginning his speech. Um, he didn't do that until a little later. All right, Nan, uh, Rick, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks.